Hello, everyone. Welcome. We're so excited to have you here today with us. I'm Melanie Hoover with Visit Fort Worth, and I'm responsible for the meeting and convention sales team. Hey, y'all, and I'm Sarah Covington with Visit Fort Worth, and I'm on the media team. We're very excited to share a virtual cocktail with you today. If you would, I know most of us know how to work Zoom, but if you don't, we're going to use the chat room today. So if you have any questions and you need us to slow down, or you didn't understand maybe one of the ingredients while we're making the drink. Just be sure and just put us a little note in the chat room and we'll get right back to you on it. Yes, so please utilize the chat room. We'll also have a Q&A session for about 15 minutes at the end that we can answer any of your questions about the two cocktails that we'll be making today with TX Whiskey. You should have received a goodie box with all of the ingredients that you'll need for the cocktails today, including a bottle of TX Whiskey as well as everything else. So feel free to make it along with us or save this to make later. And right now, I'll kick it over to Jeremy Bird with TX Whiskey. Howdy guys, uh, we're so happy to be with you today virtually. My name's Jeremy Bird. I'm Director of Events and Hospitality with TX Whiskey. Uh, behind me virtually is our beautiful still house that generally we love welcoming you all to and hopefully we can do that again here very, very soon. Um, but we're thrilled to have uh, you here with us today and to serve uh, our wonderful whiskey. The TX Blended Whiskey that you have in front of you uh, was first released in 2012 and um, actually won Best American Craft Whiskey that very first year out of the shoot at the San Francisco World Spirit Competition. So it's been a lot of fun for us, a very successful blended whiskey, and we're just really, really excited for you to try it today. Um, if you haven't already been to Whiskey Ranch, we can't wait to welcome you. Um, our distillery sits just um, a little bit south of downtown on what was the old Glen Garden Country Club and Golf Course. Uh, 112 acre, 18 hole golf course that Ben Hogan and Byron Nelson actually grew up on as caddies. So there's a lot of rich history on the land itself, not to mention um, a really, really amazing distillery that uh, is making some great whiskeys and bourbon. So we can't wait to have you out here very soon. Um, and before, uh, before we get going any further, I want you to introduce and tell you about Jason Shelley. He's our master mixologist and tavern manager. Um, he's really why you're here today. He, uh, he, it's going to be all the fun stuff. So, uh, Jason, let me introduce you and have you come up. Uh, he's going to help you uh, get started with your cocktails today. So thank you guys for being with us. And uh, before we go, there's going to be a quick little video just to show you and tell you a little bit more about Whiskey Ranch. Thank you. Hello there, my name is Jason Shelley. I am the mixologist and tavern manager at TX Whiskey at Whiskey Ranch in East Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, I'm coming to you today and we're gonna make a couple cocktails. It's gonna be fantastic. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the people from Visit Fort Worth for having me out, and of course our partnership over the years. You know, so like most people, I actually wear a lot of hats at TX Whiskey, as I'm sure you do at your job as well. I do tastings and tours, events, concerts and weddings. But, you know, of course, because of the pandemic, I have a whole new set of hats to wear. Uh, so if anything good, uh, positive has come of the pandemic, well, besides maybe curbside pickup, is that I get to do these cool virtual cocktail classes with you all today. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're actually going to talk a little bit about uh, whiskey. We're going to talk a little bit about cocktails. And, of course, we're going to talk about cocktails and whiskey, whiskey and cocktails. Uh, so the two different cocktails we're going to meet today are a blackberry sour, which gives us a little bit of technique. Uh, it's going to give us a talk a little bit about balance with that one. And then we're going to do what I call uh, the autumn, uh, I can't remember, uh, harvest autumn. It's my own drink and I can't remember the name of it, right? All right, so I made up that drink because it's easy, it's fun, there's only a couple ingredients and it's somewhat seasonal. So when we get to that, you'll see how that works. All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about our mise en pas. So what mise en pas means, it's actually a French term we use in the restaurant business, means everything in its place. So we're going to actually check out our tools, 
our ingredients to make sure we have everything and we're ready to go. So in your cocktail boxes, so they came with a shaker right here. That's an old school Boston shaker. Uh, you're actually gonna have a strainer here as well, but actually the Boston shakers actually come with their own strainer top, so uh, we can just use that. We're gonna have a lemon. You got some pineapple juice. And stop me if you're missing any of this stuff. This is a nice blackberry simple syrup. And also included are a little bit of light brown sugar and of course some cinnamon. So let's go ahead and get started uh, making some cocktails. Um, but lastly, of course, you're going to need your TX whiskey. Uh, this is the cute little bottle. And if you look at the bottle, if you hold it in your hand, it's got great packaging, a lovely look to it. it has this nice canvas top to it, as well as a wooden, handmade wooden top with a nice piece of leather. Now, we hand make each one of these tops. Uh, trust me, I know I have personal experience with this. Uh, so we actually trade uh, our whiskey with some for leather for Luke, from Luke Casey Boots, from Justin Boots. So it's a nice little deal we got working with them. All right, so first cocktail we're going to make. We're going to actually start with the blackberry sour today. So I want everybody to take out their Boston shaker here. So if, at home, if you actually have a jigger, one of these measuring devices, I encourage you to use it. If you don't, we're actually going to eyeball it today using our little top to the Boston shaker. It's going to be great. It's going to work out well. So first thing we're going to do to make the blackberry sour is we're going to take out our blackberry simple syrup. So go ahead and open up your little blackberry simple syrup. And the little top to our Boston shaker is actually three ounces. So we're going to put uh, 0.75 ounces of the blackberry simple syrup. Now there's not really any way to measure it, but so we're just going to eyeball it. So basically what you're going to do is fill it up right about a third of the way up with our blackberry simple syrup. So go ahead and pour it right into the top here. Fill it up about a third of the way. And go ahead and drop it inside uh, the big part of the shaker. Next we need to add our lemon juice. So if you have your lemon here and you got a knife and a cutting board, we're going to go ahead. First, before we even cut open the lemon, we're going to make the garnish for the drink. So what I want you to do is take your knife and just kind of cut out the outside peel of it, like so. And this is going to be the cute little garnish that's going to go on top of the drink. Now we can go ahead and cut the lemon in half. And we're going to squeeze it right into the top part of the shaker. And we're going to use the whole lemon, because we're going to get about an ounce worth of it, maybe a little bit less than an ounce, which should be exactly the right amount. So go ahead and squeeze your lemon right in there. And if a seed drops in, uh, don't worry about it. It's going to get strained out at the end. All right. So go ahead and dump your lemon juice back into the big shaker with the blackberry simple syrup. Now we're going to add the most important part, the TX whiskey. And I'm going to show you a little trick how to open these bottles. It does have this little plastic wrap to the top. And instead of struggling to kind of peel it off, basically you can just pull it all off with the, the whole plastic connected to it. So now we're going to put two ounces of the TX whiskey in there. So we're just going to fill up about two thirds of the way of our little makeshift jigger here. Go ahead and throw it all in together. Now we're going to go ahead and get set up with our cups and our ice. So go ahead and take out your glass. And we're going to go ahead and fill up our glass with ice. And do fill the glass all the way up with ice. You know, contrary to popular belief, actually the more ice you have in your drink, the less it's going to get watered down. So go ahead and fill it all the way to the top. And go ahead and put ice into the big shaker as well. Okay, now we're ready to get shaken. So go ahead and put this part on top, and definitely put this top part on the top of the shaker. If you don't, it's going to go everywhere. All right, so we're going to do some shaking. And when you shake, make sure you have one hand on top of the shaker and one hand on the bottom. That way, you know, things don't go flying. And give us some hard shakes, you know. None of this kind of stuff. We're going to actually really shake it really hard for about 10 seconds or so. So go ahead and get shaken. So 
So now we got our ingredients chilled, all mixed together, and we're ready to serve. So go ahead and pour it right onto your glass, right on top of the ice. And it's a beautiful color. All right. So now we saved our little lemon piece, our little lemon garnish. And you can twist and just set it right on top for the perfect blackberry sour. Cheers. And if at home you happen to have some blackberries laying around, throw those on there as well. There's actually no real wrong answer when it comes to garnishing a drink, unless the garnish is a vital part of the drink, like an old fashioned where you have the orange garnish. That's actually a, an essential part of the way it tastes. Now some garnishes are actually just garnishes. So in this case, these are pretty much just garnishes. All right, give it a sip and tell me what you think. Cheers. Yum. You know, the thing about our whiskey and why it works out so well in these drinks, and you know, if you've had TX whiskey before, it's real soft, malleable, a lot of kind of sweet vanilla tones, some vanilla pear. So when you mix it with cocktails, it, it, it just works with just about any cocktail you can think of. And not just traditional whiskey cocktails like a sour or an old fashioned. You can actually use our TX whiskey and Mai Tais, any, any drink that you can think of that's made with rum or vodka or gin, you can pretty much make with TX whiskey and it'll give it a little bit better flavor. All right. So a little bit about sours real quick and about balance. You know, kind of like life where you need work, home life, balance, you actually need balance in your cocktails as well. In this case, we added the sugar. We needed to balance that sugar with something, otherwise you just have whiskey, sugary whiskey. So we actually balanced it with lemon juice to make a basically a sweet and sour inside the drink. So you can actually balance uh, sugar as well with bitters to make something bitter sweet in your drink like you would an old fashioned. All right, so while you sip on your drinks, if you wanna take this time and kind of rinse out your tin, we're actually gonna use it again. If I can get mine so if you have a sink nearby and you kind of rinse it out real quick, I'm just actually going to use a bottle of water. You know, another thing about simple syrups, you know, we just use a blackberry simple syrup. A uh, simple syrup is really easy to make. Maybe that's why they call it simple syrup. I'm not exactly sure but it's basically just sugar and water. One part sugar, one part water. You bring it to a boil and you have simple syrup. Now, if you wanted to uh, experiment at home, and I'd very much encourage you to do so, you can flavor your simple syrups pretty easily. In this case, flavor with blackberries. You would take basically two parts water, two parts sugar, and one part blackberry, and you just let it simmer for about 20 minutes or so, 30 minutes, and it really infuses that kind of blackberry flavor in there. So if you want to experiment by using raspberries or strawberries or mint or rosemary, anything like that to make your own simple syrup at home, I highly encourage you to do so and do some experimenting. It's a lot of fun, especially this time of year, especially if you're stuck at home doing, not doing a whole lot, right? All right. So now we're actually going to go on to our second drink. Uh, I call this drink the Harvest Moon. Now, it is a seasonal drink, uh, seasonal by meaning fall. Now, you normally wouldn't think of pineapple being a fall flavor, but it actually works really well with the cinnamon, and that's how I started coming up with the drink. Uh, I call it Harvest Moon because it kind of looks like the moon that time of year uh, when it's big, kind of think, you know, Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown kind of thing. So that's really where I came up with the drink idea. So this one is actually made to be just fun, easy, simple, and fun to do at home, make by yourself or with your friends. All right, I get the top. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to the second drink. And for this one, we're actually gonna use our little packets that we were sent. Uh, we have cinnamon here, and then we have brown sugar. So this one doesn't have a simple syrup in there. We're literally just gonna shake some brown sugar in the drink itself. Uh, most of it's gonna dissolve in the drink. Some of it's not gonna dissolve. It's kinda gonna sit on the bottom of the glass and actually looks really cool. And when you get to the end of your drink, you get that kind of brown sugariness at the end. So, but first, we're actually going to go ahead and add, take your brown sugar packet and go ahead and dump the whole thing in there. Should be about a tablespoon. 
Now we're going to take our cinnamon packet, and I have some right here, and just go ahead and put a touch of cinnamon in the shaker as well. Now we got our pineapple juice. We can go ahead and add that in there. We're going to add two ounces of pineapple juice. So if you remember, we're using the top part of our shaker here to do the measuring. So two ounces, since this is a three ounce uh, top, it's going to fill about two thirds of the way. So make sure you shake your pineapple first a little bit before it goes in there, because the pineapple kind of separates a little bit. So fill it up to about two thirds of the way. And that's going to be about two ounces. Now we're going to take our TX whiskey and fill up the same amount, two ounces, two thirds of the way. So uh, before we add ice to the shaking, we're actually going to shake it without ice first. Uh, the reason why I do this is kind of give the brown sugar a head start to start dissolving in the drink before we add the ice. So go ahead and put our two tops on. Again, one hand on the bottom, one hand on top, and go ahead and shake it real hard. We're going to do it for about 10 seconds or so and get that brown sugar kind of dissolving into the cocktail itself. All right, now once we've done that, we can go ahead and take the top back off and add the ice. Now at home, if you have a fancy coupe glass or a martini glass, uh, I, I encourage you to use that for this drink. Now if you just want to drink it on the rocks and you just have a regular rocks glass, that's fine too. Or you, you could actually just use your rocks glass and just not put any ice in it. Uh, either way, it works just fine. It tastes the same either way, trust me. All right, put our tops back on. And we're going we're gonna to shake it uh, real hard again, but we're going to do a little bit longer this time. When you shake pineapple juice, it actually frosts it up a little bit and gives it a nice texture to the drink and looks really cool. So, all right, one hand here, one hand here, start shaking. Now that we got the top off, we can pour it into our coupe glass, martini glass, your rocks glass, whatever you got laying around. And see how nice and frothy that looks? So now we go back to our cinnamon and just sprinkle some right on top. It looks beautiful, and that way when you go in to take a sip, you're going to get that nice uh, cinnamon burst in your nose as you drink it as well. Now, if you're at home and you're just hanging out and you want to throw some extra things into your cocktail, you have a cinnamon stick, throw that in there as well. It's your party. Do whatever you want. All right. Cheers. It's a lovely cocktail. You know, one thing about making cocktails at home, I always stress to people, is, you know, have fun with it. You can look up recipes online. There's all kinds of math involved. There's 0.75 this, 0.25 that. If you want to follow those recipes, you know, I encourage you to do that as well. But if you're at home and you just want to make some drinks up, go ahead and experiment yourself. You don't exactly have to follow a recipe. We're not baking bread here, so, you know, your drink's not going to fall flat like a bread would if you don't put enough yeast in there it's pretty much going to be good either way. Now, if you make a drink and you find out, well, that was a little too sweet. Dude, next time you make the drink, put a little more booze in there. So it's all about having fun at home, really. And this is a, a great fun one to do at home. It looks beautiful, and it's, it's a cool way to impress your friends when they come over. Cheers. So eventually we're going to have everybody at, back out to the ranch and we're going to be able to enjoy all these drinks together. Uh, we do all kinds of tours, we do tastings, we have events there all the time. 
In fact, right before uh, COVID started on March 14th, I believe, we were going to have a release party for our barrel-proof bourbon, planning to have thousands and thousands of people out there. I made cocktails and set up for a thousand people. And of course, we got the word the day before that the whole world's shutting down. So now that we have all this time at home, I encourage you to you know, get online, find some flavors you like. If you like strawberries, make a strawberry simple syrup. You want to do something with a uh, rosemary, you know, smash some rosemary in your glass. You know, there's really no wrong answers. Like I said, it's your party. Do whatever you want to do. So that's kind of why I made it that last drink. It's just really fun and really easy to do as well. And we have a question. Do you have any suggestions for when <coughs> your how to unhook the <laughs> the cocktail shaker when it's frozen? Yes. Uh, the easiest that? way uh, you probably saw me struggle a little bit. You know, most bartenders, we, we use like this style of shakers with the two different tins, but they get stuck as well. Uh, so if you have this style of tin, the best way to do is just kind of tap it on the bar right where the two tins come, to come together. Now, if you have one of these tins, uh, I suggest you put the top back on and just kind of push back and forth on the top part, uh, and eventually it's just going to come loose. If that's not working for you, you know, give it a little tap right here on the side of, the, of your bar or, or your table, and eventually it's gonna come loose. And if it doesn't come loose then, you can run it under the sink, maybe kind of warm up the tin itself, and I might jar it loose as well. <coughs> All right. So, another question? We're just giving you a few for the crowd. Okay, that's good. <laughs> can you tell them what uh, your favorite, you did the Harvest Moon for fall, is there a winter cocktail or another fall co cocktail that you like? You know, one cocktail we do at the ranch, I call it the maple whiskey cider. And that actually works great hot or cold. Uh, you can find that recipe on our website, frdistilling.com, as well as many of our other recipes. The maple whiskey cider, of course, has TX whiskey in it. It has a little bit of maple syrup and uh, your favorite apple cider in there. You know, you, you use it on the rocks. You can slice some apples and put it on top. It's a beautiful drink, a little cinnamon. Or you, that's a great drink to do hot as well. So a little bit of maple syrup. Uh, you, don't, you can use fancy maple syrup. You can use Aunt Jemima's just fine too. Whiskey, apple cider, heat it up. It makes a great cold um, fall, winter's night drink as well. We had um, a question from the audience. Okay. If you could review the ingredients again uh, and how much you used uh, from the last, last drink okay. for the cinnamon. and spice. For the harvest moon. So for that one, we started with two ounces of the TX whiskey, two ounces of the pineapple juice. So equal parts whiskey, pineapple juice, a spoonful of that brown sugar, and a pinch of cinnamon. We shake it real hard, strain it out, and a little bit of cinnamon on top. And that's really all that's in that drink. Um, I, I, like I said, I really wanted that to be a fun, uh, easy drink for people to make at home. in our follow-up email. Yeah, we're going to include all these uh, recipes in the link in follow-up email. And of course, you can find a lot of the recipes, like I said, on frdistilling.com. Um, you can find recipes you can find when we're doing events. You can also check out uh, stuff we sell at our store. We're doing a program called Click and Collect, where you can actually choose items you'd like to pick up off the website. And when you and purchase it there, and you come down to the Whiskey Ranch, drive up, and then we'll just walk out to the car and hand it to you. So. If you're interested in like the barrel staves or any of our new whiskeys or any glass where you can easily pick that stuff up at there as well. Two more for you. Two more questions. Yes. The first, somebody asked if you could tell them a little bit more about the whiskey. They missed the first part of our virtual. So more about TX in general. Um, and then we had a question about batch making. Okay. So take we'll start with the whiskey. Uh, so TX whiskey is our flagship whiskey. We started with it back in 2011. Um, and at that time, we started making our bourbon as well. Now, our TX Whiskey has won many awards. San Francisco Spirits Competition, we won double gold uh, back 2012. It's a really smooth, easy drinking whiskey with a lot of sweet vanilla flavors, uh, some pear flavors, some honey butter. And I guarantee you, if you put it next to any other whiskey, uh, most people choose ours just because of the way it's just so smooth and easy to drink. And I use that smoothness that sweetness and that vanilla flavor uh, to make a variety of cocktails with. And it goes great, with, especially with sours. And like I said, any drink that you can make with rum or gin or vodka, try it with our TX whiskey and you'll be surprised at how well it works out. And we wanted to know about... Batch making. Okay, so any batch making. 
So this is how I do batch making. I kind of do it on a bottle-to-bottle -bottle, uh, basis. So each bottle, so this is a smaller bottle. The normal size bottles are about this size. So this is a 750. And each one of these bottles contains 20, about 25 ounces, uh, which I use two ounces per drink. So that makes 12 drinks per bottle. So if you're going to have you know, 12 people over, you're going to want everybody to have at least three drinks, then you're going to take three bottles, uh, basically, to, to serve everybody three drinks. So 12 drinks, basically a bottle. So if you have a recipe that calls for, like our, our second one we did was two ounces of whiskey, two ounces of pineapple juice. So it, since there's 12 drinks in a bottle, so you just basically multiply all the ingredients by 12. So uh, if you want to do one bottle's worth, which would get you 12 drinks, so that's 12 times 2, 24 ounces of pineapple juice. And that's kind of how I do batching, is basically on a bottle-to-bottle uh, -bottle basis. Um, and I, I love actually batching drinks, and I do it a lot at the ranch. We have events for you know, 1,000 people at the same time, so I'm constantly batching drinks that, that contain like 50, 60 gallons worth of old-fashioned, you know, enough to take down an, an entire army. Um, so it's, it's really easy to do it that way. Just basically just multiply. If you're using a 750 bottle, basically multiply whatever your uh, ingredient is by 12. Yes, ma'am. Can you ask about all the bottles that you have on display? Can you say which one is best for sipping and maybe discuss them? Yeah, good question. So, like I said, we started with the TX whiskey, and then we, four years later, because it takes, we took four years to age our bourbon, we came out with uh, our TX bourbon here. Uh, TX bourbon is a little bit, a little more macho, a little more beefy, it has 90 proof, a little more of a kind of a rustic uh, flavor to it. I like to sip this one and I like to make cocktails with this one. Now we do have a lot of new releases. Like I had mentioned earlier, we were gonna release our barrel proof bourbon. So we re did release it back in March. It's this one right here. So what barrel proof is, it is basically our bourbon. We just don't proof it down very far at all. So it's still full flavored and full strength. Uh, this one sits at 118.8%. Uh, definitely a sipper. Uh, I would probably add some ice, maybe a little bit of water to, to this one but you're gonna get the full flavor and full effect of our, our bourbon. Now, our, some of our more recent uh, releases, we released back in the summertime our rye whiskey. I'm super proud of our rye whiskey. I love its flavors. Uh, rye whiskeys tend to be a little bit spicier, uh, a little more kind of herbaceous flavors, and that's the case with our rye whiskey as well. Has kind of some bubblegum flavors, some menthol, mint flavors, as well as that spicy rye bread in the background. Now our two newest releases are these two right here. We have here our sherry finish and port finish. And what that means is we basically age the bourbon just like normal, four years in new American white oak barrels. And then for the sherry uh, finish, we actually take it back, take it out of that barrel, put it into uh, sherry barrels. So those sherry barrels once held PX sherry, which is kind of the, the richer, uh, sweeter style of sherry. Um, those are actually the Solaris system. So Solaris, not to get too technical, the Solaris system basically means you take a little bit out of the barrel, you put a little bit in the barrel, and just kind of goes through cycles. You'll have that one barrel sitting there for 25 years or so. So this sherry barrel for the T, uh, PX sherry was actually in use for 10 years. So we took our bourbon out of our barrel and put it into that empty PX sherry barrel and aged it for an extra nine months. So it kind of picks up those flavors from the PX sherry uh, some dried fruit, some apricot flavors, um, a little bit of herbaceousness. Uh, so that is the, the sherry finish. And yes, you can make cocktails with these. Uh, you can use the specific, um, specific flavors I kind of mentioned earlier um, to kind of design a cocktail with. Um, I, li I really like to just sip on these. I think they're just so really well made. Um, I just don't really like mixing them with anything. But of course, they make fantastic cocktails as well. Now, the port, uh, port finish, you know, same story. Uh, these, these are actually aged in tawny port barrels. Tawny port uh, are extra aged tawnies. They tend to be a little bit lighter, a lot of kind of dried fruit, uh, those apricot flavors. Um, so same thing, we took, aged them four years in the new American white oak barrels, took them out of those barrels, put them into the, the port finish barrels, aged them for an extra six months, and took it out, and there we have the port finish. So this is kind of the new rage in not only bourbon, but scotch and even gin and vodka nowadays. I've been seeing them aged in different styles of barrels. So it gives it a nice kind of 
nice finish to, to the flavor when you're drinking the whiskey bourbon. All right. Well, if we don't have any more questions, I'm going to go ahead and kick it over back to Sarah. It's a pleasure being with you guys today. I hope you enjoy the cocktails. Thank you. All right, I'll pop back on screen. Thank you all so much for being here with us today. This was pretty awesome. I love a one-on-one -on -one session with Jason, especially because all of his cocktails are amazing. And I'm sure you've tasted them by now. And if not, you'll make them later. We're gonna have, we're a little bit ahead of schedule, so we'll have a little bit more time to chat. There are any additional questions you have specifically with reps from Visit Fort Worth, as well as TX Whiskey. Um, a prompt will be coming up on your screen and give you about 60 seconds to kick to your breakout room, where we'll ask more, we can answer any of your questions you have. See you soon.